दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर थर्टीन ऑफ द कोर्स एम थ्री वन फोर फील्ड मैकेनिक्स टू एंड द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस वीक इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी ऑलरेडी टॉक्ट अबाउट ए रोटेशनल फ्लो एंड वी विल लेट सी वॉट वी डू इन दिस लेक्चर टूडे we will first go into the uh, visualizing the velocity field using an applet uh, of java java applet uh, that is uh, open source available second is uh, we will uh, visualize the velocity field uh, using a, a mathematics tool called maple maple 18 Uh, and then we will go into the concept of a stream function its uh, mathematical representation and uh, uh, then we will go into the uh, calculating the uh, value of the change in the value of the stream function and uh, uh, what it actually physically represents and then we will solve some problems related to the stream function and then um, uh, in the end uh, we would look into the expressions for stream functions uh, if we have to do it in polar coordinate system so the first thing for in today's lecture is uh, going into visualizing the vector uh, fields uh, and we have uh, on this website polstat.com you will find this uh, uh, java applet uh, Uh, on your system java must be installed uh, uh, so before running otherwise uh, this application won't run but uh, i hope most of the systems do have java running on the background so uh, let's uh, do this way uh, Uh, the advantage of this applet is this applet is having a uh, provision of uh, adding your uh, own vector field so in the form of a user defined field option and uh, we need to go into that uh, software so let me go there so this would be the interface of the uh, uh, java applet and you can see uh, uh, one upon r single line is plotted and actually it is uh, uh, if you see its flat view uh, it looks like uh, the particles uh, for example right now just what i do is i show the field vector so and uh, just increasing the vector strength and you can see the flow looks like uh, that uh, the uh, uh, the particles are going towards the origin from everywhere right? that is and actually in the radial direction so uh, this is a very handy tool i mean we can do lot of things on this uh, uh, we can uh, plot velocities velocities means for example if i want uh, my uh, Uh, uh to be adjusted uh, the flow to be as a streamline so it will see okay the particles are coming all in the radial direction and uh, you can do a lot from this stop button if you go into the bottom there is a provision of user defined field for example if i want to uh, plot some function like uh, x to the power square times uh, the u component of the velocity and uh, uh, minus 2 into x into y minus 1 let's say that is something like the y component of the velocity just put an enter here so you will be able to see the streamlines and the particles let's say first i go to the field vectors so you can see here the uh, the u is x square v is minus 2 xy minus 1 the fields looks like this thing so uh, this is how you can easily plot uh, uh, different vector fields so what you need to go do is just to go to the user defined field put your field in and a uh, lot of things you can do here uh i will tell you uh, later about this uh, what you can do it here uh, uh but at this point uh, the same thing i mean we can plot any vector field na? and what we can do is field strength i mean the magnitude of the field is decreasing number of vectors can be decreased can be increased so this is something uh, we can do it uh, uh, quite easily in this applet and uh, we will do the same thing now on the uh, maple tool as well so the maple tool looks like uh, this uh, i mean it has uh, 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 tools here there is a tutor 
and go to the tutor then you have a vector calculus and then vector fields no? so this is what i click now so let's see uh, uh, originally they have in three dimensions let's say i start with two dimensions and uh, uh, the same vector field i want it uh, to do it here uh, x to the power 2 minus 2 multiplied by x multiplied by y and uh, here I have the uh, provision of uh, drawing the streamlines in a manner that it depicts the flow let's say x uh, at point 1 and 5 uh, or 4 the field starts so I just asked to display so let's see I can uh, see it here if uh, uh, I want to sh show only the plot options uh, I just want on the x-axis from 0 to 5 and on the y-axis also from 0 to 5. So I can see it uh, only the x positive x and positive y coordinates. So uh, uh, what I just close this I can see it in a bigger picture. For example these are the vectors uh, I just uh, can change their uh, line width. Uh, I just go here and increase the line width to 2 so this seems in a vector and uh, if I ask you to display that uh, so actually once you go into this uh, what we can do is we can run uh, these animate this uh, these vectors né? so for example uh, so this is uh, the simple way of creating the uh, uh, actually I haven't animated from this toolbar I again do it uh, cut here at this point do the same thing again uh, go to the tutors uh, vector calculus vector fields and here uh, I just go on a Cartesian coordinate system and here I can go to this uh, minus uh, 2 multiply by x multiply by y or probably we have minus 1 2 okay and then we have uh, x to the power 2 is an x component of the velocity and uh, let's say my point starts from oh, x1 and y5 or 4 rather okay uh, then I say just display and then when I animate I can see this uh, crossbar is moving so that is something uh, uh, showing the magnitude of the velocity and in this plot option also I just enable from 0 to 5 and uh, is this y coordinates also from 0 to 5 uh, uh, and uh, I can see that I just close it so I will be able to get the same thing here okay at this point now if I animate I can animate it here too so it is uh, just giving me the idea how the fluid is flowing if their velocity components are in u is x square and v is minus 2 x y minus 1 so this would be the velocity vector x and y and the uh, fluid flow looks like this uh, so this is something we can do it in maple quite easily so uh, these tools are very handy in uh, um, uh, plotting these uh, uh, vector fields no? because it's all vectors okay uh, we have in the last class also we actually did this two types of vector fields so I would like you to um, uh, go through on both Java applet as well as on uh, uh, maple plotting the two different fields and look at the difference uh, that uh, on the left hand side the field is so called an air rotational field and on the other side it is a rotational field probably uh, when we we'll talk about uh, circulation uh, in the next lecture we will go into that field as well okay so now just consider that we have a problem of two dimensions so we are dealing with x and y and uh, steady state it means uh, the time uh, the term of time is not involved and the uh, density is assumed constant uh, so our continuity equation looks like this dava u by dava x plus dava b, uh, v by dava y if uh, i ask you how many unknowns this equation has uh, so you know x and y are independent variables so you, the u and v are the unknowns so we have two unknowns uh, u and v and uh, obviously by using the single equation we cannot find out two unknowns so, so we have to rely on some other equations 
So what I do is uh, I just invent a function uh, given a name called stream function. So it is just only like a function, mathematical function. You substitute some space values x and y position coordinates. You are going to get some uh, uh, some number that would be the uh, value of a stream function. So how actually stream function is related with these velocity components u and v is by this equation. So if you know that uh, hypothetical function we have given a name stream function and if you differentiate with respect to y what you are going to get is the u component of the velocity. Uh, similarly if you differentiate uh, that stream function with respect to x you are going to get the negative component of the y component of the velocity. So this is uh, a very handy function and uh, 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 very simple thing is if you know this uh, uh, mathematically the life is easy to calculate the velocity components u and v are uh, not a big deal at all because once you know the stream function differentiation with respect to y and x you are going to get u, uh, u and v respectively. Okay. And uh, keep in mind uh, there, uh, for example, if you're differentiating psi with respect to y, you get not getting the y component, but you're getting the x component. Similarly, if you're differentiating with respect to x, you're not getting the u component, but the negative of the v component. Uh, as you know, once you write down in this manner, uh, so if uh, uh, psi is given, differentiating you will be able to get velocity component so the reverse must also be true if you know the velocity components uh, then you will be able to work out the stream function so that must be true and we will see later in the problem uh, different problems by integrating it if you know the velocity components we can work out the stream function and then we will see it in the problem later in this lecture today uh, so the continuity equation in this manner uh, if you substitute it back uh, the because differentiating u with respect to x and differentiating v with respect to y equal to 0 is our continuity equation. So what I have done is I have just substituted u and v in terms of a stream function because u can be worked out by differentiating psi with respect to y and v can be worked out uh, by differentiating psi with respect to x and obviously the minus component. Uh, if you simplify this, what you see here, uh, these uh, things would be 0, so the left hand side is 0 and the right hand side is 0. So uh, what actually we learned is uh, uh, whatever stream function is, uh, it is satis automatically satisfying the continuity equation. So once it is satisfying the continuity equation, I mean uh, uh, there is uh, uh, no source term present no? or no sink term present for the mass. So mass is conserved, what is coming in, what is going out is balanced out. No? So this is something uh, uh, reflection of uh, that there is a link between stream function and the continuity equation which is actually representing the principle of conservation of mass and uh, uh, so we will explore this relationship between uh, stream function and uh, 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 the continuity equation later too. Uh, let's say for since it's a mathematical function so every x and y you are going to get a particular value of psi. So for different uh, values uh, of x and y, what we are going to get uh, different streamlines. So for example, if psi is psi 1, you are going to get a representation of uh, that straight, uh, that curve. And if psi equals to some psi 2 value, uh, at different uh, x and y, you are going to get an another line, another streamline. So eventually, uh, once you have plotted, you are going to get not just one streamline, but you are going to get the family of uh, streamlines. And uh, we will look how powerful this uh, 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 representation of the family of streamlines so that uh, at the particular instant, if you take the velocity vector which would be tangent and having a component in x and then having a component in y. So uh, uh, by plotting the streamlines uh, or by knowing the streamlines, we will be able to know the velocity components and uh, vice versa is also true. So uh, in the next slide, we will look into this physical meaning of that uh, stream function. Uh, 
so for this 2D flow, uh, if we see our definition of the stream function, we already have uh, stated it in the lecture of flow types. Uh, so what is actually important is the velocity vector would be parallel to the displacement vector. So once velocity vector is parallel to the displacement vector, then the gradient of that line uh, displacement vector and the velocity vector would be uh, same. So V over U should be the same as dy over dx. Uh, so the change in the value of the stream function if you move from uh, one point to a nearby point. Uh, so uh, the nearby point is if you travel some distance in x we call it a dx, some distance in dy some distance in y. So mathematically the change in the value of the stream function can be represented using this uh, 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 differential form. So this is uh, how because psi is a function of x and y. So uh, psi can change as uh, you are moving in x uh, times dx plus uh, psi can change with respect to y as you move in the y direction. As you know why you have multiplied with dx because uh, uh, x dimension and dx would be cancels out. So eventually on the both sides you have the same dimensions, same units. Right? So uh, uh, what do you know about this? What is this dava psi over dava x? We know from the definition of the uh, how we have defined uh, the relationship between stream function and velocity component. So uh, differentiating psi with respect to x give rise to a negative uh, component of the velocity in y direction. Similarly, if, uh, uh, the, if you differentiate psi with respect to y, you are going to get the u component of the velocity. So this is how you can write the change in the value of the stream function. Uh, if let's say stream function is constant, uh, some constant, some fixed value. So derivative of that fixed value would be 0. So the left hand side becomes 0 here and uh, once you put it 0 here, so you end up with this equation. So you can bring it uh, u dy on the other side and v dx on the other side and you can write like this. So actually it is the same thing as uh, we have defined it when your velocity vector is parallel to the displacement vector you have this relation. So uh, mathematically we have turned into the same thing if psi is some constant value which is representing a, 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 a line at particular value of psi 1 there is a one line at particular value of psi 2 there is another line. So uh, the definition for stream function is uh, uh, to be seen exactly the same as we have defined earlier. Uh, now look at the meaning of the change in the value of the stream function. So uh, if we see here you have a stream function psi and uh, uh, there is a neighboring stream line we call it psi plus d psi. So the difference would be the change in the value of the stream function. Uh, let's say uh, fluid is flowing uh, and uh, uh, there is some uh, differential change in the volume flow rate we represent by means of dq and uh, uh, so its units in two dimensions would be meter, uh, because uh, meter cube per second and uh, some flow is coming from the section AB, some flow is coming from the section BC. So uh, the units for velocity is meter per second multiply by meter it will be meter square per second and uh, one of the dimension is z is uh, unity so it would be the volume that is coming out from the phase AB and this is the volume flow rate that has been coming out from the BC. Okay, so uh, uh, that is what we have represented. DQ is representing the volume flow rate per unit width perpendicular to the xy plane uh, between these two streamlines. Uh, uh, it is clear that whatever the flow is coming in, uh, either you move uh, from point A to point C or you move first from A to point B and then from B to point C. Uh, uh, volume flow rate remains the same. So actually using the principle of conservation of mass we can say that whatever is coming in the same is going out because there is no uh, source 
so we, what is coming in is let's say dq is the volume flow rate that is coming in so what is going out this component and this component so uh, minus v dx component and plus u dy component that is going out so as we already have seen earlier that the d psi is representing minus v dx uh, plus u dy because v is uh, uh, actually the uh, minus dava psi by dava uh, x and u is dava psi by dava y so we can say d psi equal to so if you compare these two equations uh, they are identical they are identical it means uh, what actually the change in the value of the stream function is representing nothing uh, the change in the uh, flow rate so what we can say is we can conclude at this point here is uh, the change in this flow rate is actually basically the change in the value of the stream function so more the change in the value of the stream function more would be the change in the flow rate so uh, the physical meaning of this uh, uh, change in the value of the stream function is uh, uh, actually representing the volume flow rate so that is what we look at the change in the value of the stream function is related to volume flow rate and if you integrate both sides uh, you will be able to get uh, the value of the stream function at uh, 0.2 and the stream function at 0.1 so the difference is actually representing the q which is actually the volume flow rate so uh, it means if uh, you have two streamlines and if you calculate because the mathematical function so you at different x and y you calculate uh, psi 2 you calculate psi 1 and if you take the difference uh, the difference is representing the volume flow rate so more the difference uh, in the magnitude more will be the volume flow rate uh, okay uh, let's say what actually uh, the what will be the direction of the flow that can be represented if let's say psi 2 is a bigger number psi 1 is a smaller number so it means uh, q comes out to be positive it means the direction of the flow if psi 2 is bigger than psi 1 the direction is in the forward direction let's uh, see here if psi 2 is a bigger number psi 1 is a smaller number let's say psi 2 is 5 psi 1 is 3 so 5 minus 3 would be 2 so 2 is a positive number that represent the flow is taking place uh, in this manner if psi 1 is this streamline and psi 2 is this streamline so uh, uh, this relative magnitude of psi 2 and psi 1 gives an idea about the direction of the flow. Similarly, if psi 2 is a smaller number and psi 1 is a bigger number, so you are going to get the negative. Actually, it means flow is not in the positive direction, flow is in the opposite direction. So this gives us uh, the explanation regarding the uh, relative uh, 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 the magnitude, the difference, uh, the number gives us the, the idea about in which direction is actually the fluid flow is taking place. Okay, so uh, the change in the stream function is actually the volume flow rate. So it means if you increase this number, if you uh, increase this difference of the two, num uh, two stream functions, value of the two stream functions, you are going to get the higher the flow rate. So, as you see, let's say you have some uh, converging section. So, what is actually happening is uh, since the uh, conservation of mass is satisfied, so whatever is coming in is going to leave. But once you have a smaller area and so it means volume flow rate is the same. So, actually uh, uh, these uh, closer streamlines represent that uh, 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 the the fluid is accelerating so uh, closer the streamlines once you plot it it means this is the region where the velocity is higher and obviously as it is an inviscid flow we can see using Bernoulli equation that when the velocity is higher the, the pressure would be lower the same thing we observe in this uh, flow over an aerofoil so on the top surface uh, of an aerofoil the velocities are much higher so uh, it means the pressure is low and uh, similarly the pressure is high on the bottom and the difference of pressure provides the lift to the aerofoil uh, uh, 
and uh, it is uh, obviously uh, we are assuming it a uh, uh, streamlined flow or we are assuming that the Bernoulli equation is valid where you have uh, altitude term is ignored so you have a pressure term you have a kinetic term and the total is constant so if uh, at some point velocity is increasing so pressure is decreasing and uh, uh, vice versa. So the streamlines, once we know the stream function, we can easily plot the streamlines and these streamlines gives us the qualitative uh, uh, assessment of the flow where the uh, pressure is higher or the, where the pressure is low or where the velocity is higher and where the uh, velocity is low. So this is something we can uh, easily work out. Okay, let's go into the problem. Uh, we have a situation here water is flowing steadily over an inclined plate so we have a plate at some angle and uh, streak lines are generated by introducing the die at evenly spaced points upstream of the field so uh, this is the upstream side this is the downstream side and uh, 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 how can you tell from this streamline pattern whether the flow speed in a particular region of the flow, flow field is uh, small or large. So first of all, is this in a streamline? I mean, they have said uh, the uh, streak lines are generated and the question is about streamline. So what do, you, what do you know about? Both are same. Yeah, actually the first point is since the flow is steady, so there is uh, there is no difference between the streak lines and the stream lines. So both will coincide each other. We have already learned in the lecture of flow types. Then whenever you have a steady flow, so water is flowing steadily. So whatever the streak lines are generated is actually the same thing as the stream lines because it is in a steady flow. Only in case of an unsteady flow, uh, the two lines would be different. Okay, uh, the second thing is uh, how do you know what is actually the uh, 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 flow pattern in particular region of the flow field. So at this portion you see the streamlines are much much closer and here they are quite far apart. So what do you notice the next thing is uh, 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 at the upstream side when fluid enters before striking the inclined plate. Uh, all the stream lines are equally spaced. So this is a representation that once the flow enters, the magnitude of the velocity is uniform. So everywhere in the space on this cross section, the magnitude of the velocity is the same. So uh, because the stream lines are equally spaced. Uh, now let's look at the as the fluid is approaching to the plate. Actually, uh, and you see uh, the, the spacing between the fluid lines are increasing. So it means the spacing increasing means the fluid is actually decelerating. And at some point, there would be called as an stagnation point. So there is no flow takes place. Now. So the velocity becomes zero because it is decelerating and at some point it would be zero. So that point would be called as a stagnation point. And then we see at the corners, the, uh, the streamlines are much closer. So it means at the uh, uh, edges of this inclined plane, uh, the streamline pattern is much closer. So it means the flow is accelerating here. Similarly, the same thing is on the bottom side of the plate, the fluid flow is accelerating. So just by visualization, if you have the stream uh, lines, you can plot it. Uh, that would be a family of streamlines and that would be representing uh, the behavior of the fluid flow. Uh, now let's go into the mathematical problem. Let's say we have a 2D steady incompressible fluid flow. The velocity field is a function of uh, the U component of the velocity is some function of uh, uh, X minus 4Y and V is minus Y minus 4X. Uh, so first part of this problem requires that you have to see whether this field is satisfying the continuity equation. And then in the next part, we have to find the corresponding uh, stream function. So if the velocity field is given, so you have a continuity equation, you know u is uh, uh, x minus 4y, v is minus y minus 4x and now you have to differentiate with respect to x. So the 
uh, with respect to x then it would be 1 because 4y would be constant so the derivative of a constant would be 0 and then here uh, with respect to y its uh, derivative would be minus 1 and minus 4x would be a constant because you are differentiating with respect to y then its derivative of the constant would be 0. So eventually you uh, observe that this velocity field is uh, satisfying the continuity. Uh, equation. Okay, uh, the next uh, thing is to work out uh, the corresponding stream function. Uh, so, it is actually the reverse problem. So, if you know the stream function by differentiating, you can get the uh, uh, velocity component. So, here the problem is reverse. Uh, it means if velocity component are given, how to work out? Obviously, we need to integrate. Okay, let's see the first component is given psi with respect to y you can get the u component so if you uh, uh, u is given i just substituted the value of u which is x minus 4y and now i separate the variables and integrate y is on the other side so change in the psi would be uh, d psi if you integrate it would be psi and uh, x would be once integrated with respect to uh, y and uh, minus 4y to be integrated and whatever the constant uh, of integration would be some function of x because your your independent variable is y so whatever the constant would be some function of x we don't know we will evaluate so uh, the derivative of x would be integral of x would be x is uh, constant so derivative of dy of y would be y and uh, for here the integral of y would be y square upon 2 and uh, there is some constant of integration would be some function of x so you simplify you end up with this stream function but you don't know what is that constant uh, so far you have only used one of the component of the velocity you have never used you so far you haven't used the component v component of the velocity okay now we use the what i do is because v component is to be worked out if you differentiate uh, psi with respect to x you are going to get the v component so right now i am differentiating psi with respect to x so if you differentiate this expression with respect to x you know with respect to x it would be y so whole thing is y is a constant and this would be some uh, first derivative of the function of x so as you know from your uh, uh, definition that uh, if you know stream function and if you differentiate it with respect to x you are going to get the negative v component of the velocity and uh, y plus uh, f prime x which is the first derivative so you have uh, uh, v is substituted back from y minus 4x and simplify so what we are going to get uh, the first derivative of, of 4 of x so first derivative of 4x means the function would be some 4x square upon 2 plus some constant of integration so ff would be some 2x square plus c so i know this uh, now i would be able to substitute it back here f of x f of x is 2x square plus c so eventually I got the uh, stream function. So at every x and y I am going to get different values of psi. And uh, since at c0 uh, there would be a one stream, one set of value. At c1 you have another set of value. So basically this psi is representing not just a one streamline but a family of uh, streamlines. And you can plot it mathematically too. Uh, Okay, the last thing we have to go into this polar coordinate system. So instead of x and y, you are dealing with r and theta. So oh, uh, this is the form I have given you an assignment as well to write continuity equation and del operators all in polar coordinates uh, and spherical coordinates. So in two dimensions, you have a radial component of the velocity. R and theta are the variables. So Vr would be the velocity in the radial direction. So that direction would be the radial direction. And the V theta would be the something tangential direction or perpendicular to the radial direction. And uh, here Vr is the velocity component in radial direction. V theta is the velocity component in tangential direction. And if uh, there is a three dimensional problem, then velocity would be in the Z direction since these are the magnitude of the velocity so the direct uh, the direction of the velocity in radial would be theta e r cap so it is a unit vector in the radial direction and it is a unit vector in the tangential direction 
Okay, we can uh, relate uh, velocity component uh, in the uh, uh, radial and tangential components of the velocity in polar coordinates with respect to stream function like this. If you uh, uh, interested in R component of the velocity, you have to differentiate uh, the stream function with respect to theta and uh, 1 upon R should be there and similarly if you differentiate psi with respect to R you are going to get the negative of the tangential component of the velocity. So V theta is a tangential component, V R is the radial component. So uh, problems can be given related to uh, stream function would be in polar coordinate system as well. So once we see the resultant vector, so V is a vector having a radial component of the velocity and having a tangential component. So radial component is in the radial direction. So this would be the radial component and perpendicular to the radial component would be the tangential component and tangential is always orthogonal to the radial component. And uh, we can uh, see that uh, the idea of actually the stream function is uh, I mean the concept of uh, velocity is generic, it could be in two dimensions, it could be in three dimensions, uh, but uh, as we have seen this continuity equation in 2D for polar coordinate as well as in Cartesian coordinate, so uh, 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 if you x and y is a combination then actually the idea of stream function or the definition of stream function in which the displacement vector is parallel to the velocity vector is applicable to the two dimension problem and if you say y and z then once again it would be uh, y and z would be two components now or if it would be x and z it would be two dimensions so that is what the idea of stream function actually restricted to two dimensional flow because uh, uh, the uh, the displacement vectors and the velocity vectors would be parallel to each other so once they are parallel then their gradient would be uh, the same. So this is how we finish today's lecture and we stop at this point. Uh,